right. Uh, good morning again, guys. Again, this is Christian Janelle Mercado. I'll be accommodating you all throughout the webinar. While we are waiting for the others to enter our um, Zoom meeting, I will call on our very beautiful president of the Scopes or the Engineering Council. Are you there, Ms. Rocher and Reyes? Yes, hello. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Prime. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Sa... Sa lubong na iyong pagbati. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, sal maraming salamat po. Ito po ang aming pangalawang webinar. Gusto ko lang din pong i-acknowledge ang ibang professor from other course. Amparo. And syempre po, sa iba pong professor po na ating engineering, Sir Patio and Sir Alba. And Sir Padilla, maraming salamat po from attending our webinar for today. Hello, Sir Mark. Ang hello. And syempre po sa ating department head, Sir Kel, and ating vice president, Sir Camigla. Hello po, good morning. Nais ko lang din po i-acknowledge ang ibang school po na umatin po sa aming webinar. Salamat po. So right. thank you everyone. Please enjoy. Thank you. All right. Yes, we will enjoy. We'll truly enjoy this webinar, guys, like what uh, Ms. President mentioned. So we do store a lot of surprises for you today, guys. So please stay connected with us throughout the whole webinar. Okay. So again, if you haven't registered yet or we're not able to um, click on the registration link, it's available on the chat box. It's the very first um, message that we have coming from Miss Monique, which is our registration committee, you can actually click on there. So you'll be included in our raffle drill on the latter part of our webinar. So again, we welcome everyone. Um, Dr. Camigla, thank you so much for uh, your participation for, for today and to our faculty, uh, engineering faculty. And also we would like to acknowledge all our participants coming from different universities and schools. Welcome guys, welcome to Trimex Colleges. And uh, actually uh, it's a webinar series. So we have, this is our second webinar with our team championing professionals in the new normal, the world of computer engineering. And for today's webinar topic is introduction to fuzzy logic and its application with our resource speaker, Engineer Rhino Vilen Caldo, MPA, MS, -E -E -C -E. So while we are waiting for the others as well as for our resource speaker, if you have any questions, feel free to post it on the chat box. We do have a lot of our committee that will be answering and taking it down for you. And if, in case you have questions in the middle of the webinar, you can actually post it on the chat box so we are fully aware. So if in case uh, there will be a Q&A portion at the end of the webinar, so our uh, resource speaker, uh, Engineer Caldo, can be able to answer those questions. So we'll go ahead and park that for the meantime while um, he is conducting the uh, talk, okay? So again, we welcome all of you. Good morning, good morning. Thank you so much for waking up uh, early on this morning. I know some of you are uh, just got home from their work, so we are tr truly appreciate your participation for today. And also, um, if you haven't take your morning coffee, you can actually grab one. Um, where it's still early for us to start the webinar for our resource speakers, so you can get your coffee, uh, take a sip, and um, just sit down and relax. We'll be go uh, we'll go ahead and have fun on this webinar for today. Okay, again, feel free to. Um, post your questions or any inquiries on our chat box. We do have a lot of our team to accommodate you, okay? And uh, yeah, while we are waiting, here is the program scheduled for today, so you can check it out. This will be our schedule for the entire webinar for today. All right, there you go.
All right, and again, we are live through Zoom and Facebook Live. So, through our Facebook Live peeps, hello, hello, good morning. Thank you so much for participating. And if you wanted to, uh, for uh, you can actually share this link, guys, to some of your friends, your family members, or to your colleagues, uh, to your um, classmates. You can actually forward the link. They are welcome to you um, participate to our today's webinar, okay? So, yep, uh, we will prolong a little bit the agony, okay? So, <laughs> well, we are waiting for the others because we would like, uh, before we start the uh, webinar proper, is for everyone to enter the Zoom link so they can be able to um, hear uh, the entire talk for our research speaker, Andrew Reino Belen Caldo with the uh, topic introduction to fuzzy logic and its application. And again, uh, pl uh, just a reminder uh, for those who haven't registered, you can actually check out the link on the chat box. You can register, so you will be included to our raffle draw. We store a lot of surprises for you today, guys, for the entire webinar, so Cali, stay tuned, okay? So if you have any other questions, again, feel free to enter, chat it on the chat box below. <laughs> so we can accommodate it for you, okay? We do have a lot of committee to answer all of your questions, all right? So while we are waiting, again, we welcome especially our um, VP, uh, Dr. Rito Kamigla, and to our engineering faculty. Hello, ma'am, sirs. I thank you for participating for our webinar. And also uh, to those participants coming from different universities, thank you so much for attending our webinar. And to our um, professionals from the uh, from other companies, um, computer companies that we have today. Hello, guys. Good morning, ma'am, sirs. Thank you for participating. So again, this is Christian Junal Mercado. I'll be accommodating you all for today. All right. So while we are waiting, uh, just um, Time check already. 8.49, thank you so much. It's early in the morning, guys, right? Some of you I know are not that morning person. So you can grab your coffee, take a zip, sit, sit back and relax, okay? So right now we are, we have 90 participants here in Zoom and it's counting in Facebook. So we are, we are also live at Facebook. You can share the link you can check out the Trimex College, College's uh, Facebook page. And also, if you are interested uh, to the courses that we have at Trimex Colleges, you can actually check out on trimexcolleges.edu.ph. Thank you. And right now, while we are waiting for our resource speaker, so again, uh, we do have our house rules. So we can conduct the webinar properly. We can understand it more and thoroughly. So kindly watch this, please, and take down some of our, our house rules. So, you know, we can have a seamless and understandable webinar. Check it out, guys.
All right, uh, good morning again, guys. We are live from Zoom and Facebook Live. So if you haven't checked it out, if you wanted to share this um, webinar to your Facebook friends, you can do so, okay? Uh, you can check out the uh, Trimex College's Facebook page. Uh, we are live at Facebook as well. So you, uh, in case they can be able to join us on Zoom, they can actually um, view and uh, view the webinar to, through the uh, Facebook Live. So kindly check it out, you can share. So your FB friends can be able to um, have takeaways as well about this webinar. So again, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, post it on the chat box. We'll be uh, more than happy to accommodate all your questions. And again, for those who just entered the webinar, feel free to register uh, to our registration link. That is the very first chat from our chat box uh, from Miss Monique Tenido. So you can be included on our raffle draw uh, on the latter part of our program, okay? So I think some of our um, distinguished guests already entered the webinar. We're just waiting for the um, go signal for that. So while we are waiting, here is the program schedule throughout the morning. Again, we truly appreciate your um, participation and your patience for standing by through um, uh, from 7.30 up until now. Thank you so much for um, your patience, guys. Um, we will be starting the webinar proper in a little bit. While we are waiting, uh, you can check out the program scheduled on your screen. And again, uh, for those who haven't registered, kindly click check on the link on the chat box. You can register right now. So you will be included on our raffle draw on the latter part of our program. We store a lot of surprises for all of you guys. For those who are watching on Facebook Live, hello guys from Facebook. Welcome, welcome, good morning. All right, so we have, I do have now the go signal to start the program proper. And without further ado, we'll go ahead and start the uh, program by our opening prayer. Lord, thank you for this day for the presence of everyone in this call. For once again, we are gathered and given the opportunity to appreciate life and your words. Forgive us for our shortcomings and cleanse our hearts as we learn and live your words and example. Father, bless our endeavors, especially today's meeting. May you guide us in our discussions and may you enlighten our minds in every decision that we make. Give us your grace that we may effectively do our parts for your greater glory. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And this is followed by our national anthem. Sang awit 
ng Pilipinas. Alright, uh, good morning again. This is Christian Janelle Mercado will be your host for today's webinar and we all welcome you to our webinar for today's topic is introduction to puzzle logic and its applications. And uh, to give us some opening remarks, I'll be calling on um, with Dr. Rito uh, Camigla. Uh, here are a short uh, message coming from our VP of Student Affairs and Development Office. Let's watch, let's watch this. I would like to welcome everyone to the new normal. Alam nyo, maraming pagpabago ang binigay sa atin ng pandemya nito. Mula sa kabuhayan at pati na rin sa kung paano tayo makikisalamuha. Lahat tayo ay binago ng COVID-19 pandemic. So balit sa isang banda, ay may naidulot din naman itong magandang aral para sa ating lahat. Katulad ng pagpapahalaga sa pamilya, sa kung ano ang meron at iniingatan natin. Sa nakalipas sa sampung buwan, pinatunayan natin ang tatag ng mga Pilipino. Hindi natin inaasahan ang bilis ng mga pangyayari na halos lahat ay cashless na. Na kung gusto mong kumain, ay magpa-deliver ka. Kung magbabayad ka ng bills, ay pwede na online. Shopping, banking, at kung ano-ano pa. Pero alam nyo, lahat ng yan ay napaghandaan na ng Trimex Colleges. Mula sa online payment, enrollment, records, and even the conduct of classes. At sa hapong ito, tayo ay magiging bahagi ng isang mahalagang gawain, handa para lamang sa atin. Namnamin ang bawat salita at bawat um, minuto at nawa ay matuto tayo. Maraming salamat at magandang araw sa ating lahat. Thank you so much, Dr. Rito Camigla. And now a message coming from the Program Chair of College of Engineering, Dr. Kerbin De Mesa. Good morning to everyone of you. So welcome to the General Assembly and of course the webinar series for Computer Engineering Department. So I would just like to welcome to all of you here for this activity. So I would just like to thank first to our scope officers, to the Faculty of Engineering and to other guests, participants and resource speakers for this particular webinar a pleasant morning to all of you. So this webinar is not only intended for having a general assembly, but also in order to promote camaraderie to our students. The same manner, despite we are experiencing pandemic during this time, so be able actually to give information or knowledge to make our students updated to the current trends in terms of technology. I'm actually welcoming you for this particular event because it will be a great um, and helpful tool for all of us to make ourselves updated to the different trends in terms of technology nowadays. Thank you so much for participating also for this particular event. This will be not be possible without your cooperations. That's why 
Um, just sit back and relax and enjoy the different webinar series that we actually be given to all of you this particular time. So have a nice day to everyone and God bless to us. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Camigla and Engineer De Massa for the wonderful messages. And now we'll be going on to the webinar proper. To introduce our speaker, our research speaker for today, may I call on Mr. Brian Christian Cappadocia? Good morning, everyone. I'm Brian Christian Cappadocia, Computer Engineering of Primex College. I'm so excited to introduce our guest speaker for today. Why am I excited? Because his talk is very relevant to all of us. She'll give us a talk about introducing fossil logic and its applications. Okay, so just a bit brief background. Our guest speaker for today, um, graduated Bachelor of Science in Computer Engineering in Lyceum of the Philippines University, Laguna, or LPUL in 2006. Also, he is Master's in Public Administration or MPA in Polytechnic University of the Philippines in 2010, and Master's of Science in Electronics and Engineering or MSC ECE in the La Salle University in 2013. Under Department of Science and Technology or DOST, Engineering Res Research and Development Technology or, or ERDT scholarship, he also pursues his master in engineering with special specialization in computer engineering in Adamson University. University under Commission on Higher Education or CHED. Scholarship program, his, he took his leave absence for his Doctor of Philosophy in Electronics and Communications Engineering or PhD ECE. I'm sorry. Under the LSU scholarship to finish his third master's degree for vertical alignment he worked as quality inspector in solutions, um, people innovation for eight months. He worked as statical process control or SPC, data management system or DMS. Engineer for three years in Evident Philippines Incorporation. He took full-time faculty position in LPU Laguna. He, he also handled intellectual property coordinator position, research coordinator of COECS department and computer engineering program chair in the same institution. He was a former OIC education coordinator of ACLC College San Pablo for a year. More, more so, he was then, he was then an assistant professional Professorial Lecture 3 in De La Salle University, Assistant Professor 3 in Malayan College, Laguna, or MCL, also known as Mapua University of College, Assistant Professor for in University of Perpetual Health Delta System. College Campus Instructor 1 in Tanawan City College, Ergo. He is the CEO or President or Project Manager of R. Caldo Technical Consultancy Services founded March 19, 2017. He was able to present and publish multiple papers in the local international arena, including Scopus, EI, and ISI publications in respected journals. He published 22 Scopus Index Conference Proceeding in IEE, Scopus EI, and ISI Journal Springer Publications. As of date, he had more than 140 research publications, 57 research presentations, 52 seminars, conferences, conventions, workshops attended, 32 awards on 32 awards and scholarships and 24 resource speaking and chairmanship chairmanship engagements 
he was granted funds from the OST and CHED for research presentation, publication, and dissemination. He was a recipient of several research presentations. He was a recipient of several research awards and organization, organizing and chairing research. Colloquia, Colloquia in the institution. He was the general conference chair of the National Research Conference on Computer Engineering Applications or RCCEA for 2015 and 2016 and research conference on digi digital system and its applications or, or RCODSA in 2019. He was invited as resource speaker to more than 10 universities and institutions in the country. He took chairmanship of different sessions and peer reviews in international conferences. Also, he is a technical program committee or TPC member and reviewer of the prestigious organization, Institute of Electronics and Electrical Engineering or IEEE. He is now holding the position of model-based design engineer in ROHM, LSI Design, Philippines Incorporated, or RLDP, since August 7, 2017. And model, and model Development Group, or MDG, group leader since July 6, 2018. He is in partnership with multi-axis and handlers and technology Incor incorporation AII TESDA Philippine and driving assessment and simulation hub or dash project team to design develop and implemented automated drivers assessment and driving simulator system to make the Philippines and ha and Philippines a happy and safe place to drive in since Seb September 2017. So without any further ado, let's give our let's give our guest speaker a round of virtual applause. Engineer Ryanel Belencado. Hi sir, good morning. Hello, good morning to everyone. I hope okay okay I hope you can hear me clearly so I'll be sharing my screen for a while Okay, is my presentation slide already visible? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, sir. Visible. Okay, so let's start. So again, um, good good morning to everyone. I also would like to appreciate the the committee behind this webinar, and of course, along with your professors and the teacher in charge, and to our attendees as well. Thank you so much for attending today's webinar. So I'll be the ones to be presenting to you today. And my topic is all about introduction to facile logic and its applications. So thank you also to the to Brian for reading through my biography and introducing me properly. For our today's discussion, I will be focusing on the following topics. At first, I understand that most of us may not be familiar with facile logic, so allow me to define it properly. And then we'll be dealing with a little bit history about facile logic. And then later on, we'll be comparing facile logic with other computational intelligence like neural network. And then um, how are we going to apply facile logic, especially in control systems? And you'll be surprised that facile logic can also be applied in other fields. Um, before the Seminar ends, I will be also presenting to you some completed research works that I presented related to facilogic. 
So that you'll be given some idea on how you can also use passive logic, especially in your research works. Um, the father of fuzzy logic is Professor Lopisade from University of California, Berkeley, and he discovered this concept in 1965. According to him, people do not require precise numerical information input, and yet they are capable of highly adaptive control. So meaning to say um, most of the current equations or formulas that we are currently using right now it requires precise or accurate input. However, um, Professor Lotfi Sade tried to consider accepting noisy or imprecise input, and he devised an algorithm so that he can transform those inputs to its desired output. So that's where um, fuzzy logic comes in. So what is fuzzy logic? So fuzzy from the term itself, it means not clear, distinct or precise or blurred. So the definition of fuzzy logic is that it is a form of knowledge representation suitable for notions that cannot be defined precisely, but which depend upon their context. So what does it mean? So most of our attendees today are engineering students. And I understand that engineering students have a lot of high level mathematics, right? From differential equation, to advanced mathematics and so on. But using fuzzy logic, you don't need to use um, high level formulas in order for you to formulate your mathematical model. You only have to use rule-based systems and then you can also solve the problem. So is it nice that we can use fuzzy logic for that purpose? I'm sure it is. Another terminology that we can use for fuzzy logic is rule-based systems. So we term this one as rule-based systems because these are systems that make decisions based on rules. So the very idea here in fuzzy logic is you really need to have a, a tangible rule in order for you to solve the problem. So we use rules that can be stated and we can even term those rules as crease rules or fuzzy rules. An example would be when we are dealing with NXA concepts like bigger, smaller, and faster. So it is easier to state the rules using this linguistic classification. However, um, we can also use numerical values for this purpose. But um, say, for example, a person which is taller is different with an animal which is bigger, but we can use the same linguistic classification. But it only differs in the numerical value. However, the difficult thing about the rule-based system is that optimi optimization can be very difficult. So fine-tuning is very important in fuzzy logic, and most of the researchers are finding hard to optimize or to, to fine-tune their algorithm to use the fuzzy logic. So that is one of the... Um, difficulty that we can encounter when we use fuzzy logic optimization. Um, Rule-based system, first, we needed to define the rules. So, but I have a note here that it is easier said than done because um, defining rules is not that easy. You need some experts, you need some experience from the operator or a person that is expert on that specific area of application in which you can get some idea on how are you going to formulate the rules. Also, you have to consider are the rules consistent? Because um, maybe um, you're able to define the rules, however, most of the rules are redundant and some rules are just um, replicate of the other rules, so it is not consistent. Are the rules complete? Because maybe some of the rules may be missed so make sure that the rules are complete, that, you are, that you're able to cover all of the possibilities. So FASI systems is another um, concept or jargon that we use in FASI logic. FASI systems define the FASI membership functions, and we have different um, FASI membership functions, so I'll be explaining it to you one by one later on, so that you'll be clear about the different types of membership functions. Basically, fuzzy logic is a problem-solving control system methodology. So meaning to say, regardless of problem, 
whether it is in the field of engineering or in the field of business or whatever problem that you have, you can actually control them using fuzzy logic. And we usually use linguistic or fuzzy variables instead of numerical values. Because um, in the numerical value, what we actually use in fuzzy logic is we normalize the value, but we do represent them as linguistics. Example, this is an, an example of a rule. If the process is too hot and the process is heating properly, then you can cool the process quickly. So does it make sense? Of course, if the process is too hot and you are heating it rapidly, you have to cool it um, quickly so that um, it will be cooler. So that is one um, rule that we need to con that we need to consider in fuzzy logic as an example. So what are the different advantages and disadvantages of fuzzy logic? Number one, just like any other computational intelligence, it mimics human control logic. So the way we think, um, the way we analyze, the way we solve a particular problem. So that is actually the same concept in fuzzy logic. And another advantage is it uses imprecise language. So as I have said earlier, so you don't need to have an, a precise input yet or an accurate input yet. You just needed to have a good rules first. And then inherently robust and it fails safely and modified and tweak easily. So what does it mean? So before you can actually implement in a hardware implementation of your prototype or design, you can actually test first using fuzzy logic. So once you see that the results are not good, you can actually change the rules and you can actually modify and tweak the, the rules that you've set. So you don't need to consider the, the risk, the, the failure in case that your system will fail eventually. Unlike um, prototyping, when you do already the prototype, of course, it requires cost already. And when it fails, then you needed to repeat it all over again. So that is the main idea about fuzzy logic. For the disadvantages, as I have said earlier, um, we needed experience from the operator or expert specifically for that field. And the system might be some complex or it might be a little bit complicated. So you also have to consider the complexity of your system. In order for us to understand fuzzy logic, I prepared here a sample a traditional representation of logic. So as we know, the computer only understands binary, zero and then one. It is a machine code or machine language or binary code in other terminologies. And in that sense, we only use zero and then one, okay? So an example here, we have here a snail, which is the speed is slow. The linguistic classification of the snail relative to its speed is slow. However, for the cheetah, the linguistic classification is fast for the numerical value of speed, which is one. So we have two... Um, example here, snail and then the cheetah. So when we do the coding using C or C++, what we did is we actually define speed as Boolean because it's just a matter of true or false or zero and then one. And then we get the speed from the user. And then we analyze using conditional statement in this example, if else, if the speed is zero, then it is slow. It is a comment here that it is slow for the linguistic classification. Else, if this particular condition is not satisfied, then it is fast. So that is the traditional representation of logic. Now, I will relate this one. How are we going to implement using fuzzy logic? Using fuzzy logic, so we don't actually use zero and then one, but we actually use values within zero and then one. Okay, so in this example, we can actually represent different animals this time aside from the snail and aside from the cheetah. And we can set numerical values for that specific um, animal. So we have your the snail. So slowest is the linguistic classification of the range from zero to 0.25 and then followed by the turtle. 
which we classify as low with a range from 0.25 to 0.5. And then we also have your the dog, which is fast, 0.5 to 0.75. And we have your the fastest, which is the cheetah, from 0.75 to 1. As for the category or the sequence of these animals relative to their speed, so the slowest, slow, fast, and fastest, these classifications are correct. Right? But if you put cheetah here as slowest, then it is not good enough. So that means that you needed to have some expert in order for you to help out. How are you to set the rules and how are you to classify the specific um, variable or in this case animal that you will be using in your fuzzy logic? So for every problem, it must represent terms of fuzzy sets. So what are now the fuzzy sets? So basically the fuzzy sets here are the slowest, the slow, the fast, and the fastest. And these linguistic classifications can be also be represented using membership functions. If you will be coding this one using C++ again, so it's very simple. You only use um, additional um, and operator here to represent that if the speed is greater than or equal to zero, and the speed is less than 0.25, then the speed is slower. So you're referring here to the snail. And follows for the turtle, follows for the dog, and the last, of course, is the cheetah. Of course, you can also use a um, switch statement here. So actually, the good idea about fuzzy logic is we really don't care what programming languages are you going to use. You just needed to understand how are you going to use or implement fuzzy logic. In my case, I already use fuzzy logic using C++, using Excel BBA macro program, using Verilog and VHDL. Can you imagine? I have used that one using VHDL. It's so hard to code in there. I even use using Arduino IDE. Okay. And of course, you can actually use MATLAB fuzzy logic toolbox. I even use that one as well. So regardless of the programming languages, as long as you understand what fuzzy logic is, you can actually embed that or include that in your research frame. So basically, these are just the origins of the fuzzy logic. It traces back to ancient Greece. And as I have said, the first to publish the ideas of fuzzy logic is Lotfi Asder said that in 1965. So if you would like to study further, about fuzzy logic. So I suggest you can read through the publications and articles written by Sade. And some of the fuzzy and friend systems are actually named to Sade. So it's actually Mamdani and Sade. Those are the names of the membership um, fuzzy inference systems that we can actually use. Another is Professor Toshir Terano in 1972, in which he organized the world's first working group on passive systems. That's why um, we actually have, um, even right now, a lot of conferences or journal publications specific to fuzzy logic alone. I was even invited to review some of the papers internationally related to fuzzy logic systems for publication purposes. And I myself contributed to um, some research works related to fuzzy logic, even published in Scopus and Springer publication. And in the company application, we also have FL Smith and Corporation in 1980. They are the first one to market fast expert systems. Actually, even in your homes, you have do you do have a lot of um, fuzzy logic applications. If you have automatic washing machine at home, so it applies the concept of fuzzy logic without your knowing. So passy sets, items can belong to a passy set to different degrees. And that degree, we term that one as degrees of membership. So completely within a set is a membership degree of one. And completely outside a set is a membership degree of zero. Okay, so later on, I'll be trying to show you a short video clip. And I hope it can be visible or you can hear clearly the, the video clip that I'll be sharing later on so that you can visually understand what um, FASI sets are. So degrees of membership must sum to one, just like in your statistics, diba? So an item can be both A and not A to different degrees. 
A to a degree of point A and not A to point 2. So the maximum value per probability is 1. So when a degree of A is applicable of point A, of course, its negation A is point 2. Degrees of membership are even expressed with membership functions, and we do have different types of membership functions. And range of values a variable can take is called the universe of this course. So I will now be explaining to you the different types of membership function. But before that, let me clarify to you that a membership function describes the degree of membership of a value in a past set referred to as a membership function. Also, we term this one as mu of x, where x is the value being classified. So we have different types of membership function, and it also depends on the applications of your problem that you are trying to solve. What specific membership function are you going to use? First common example is the singleton. This singleton membership function, as you can see, we have here an x variable. And the y variable is the membership degree. And the membership degree is from 0 to 1. And the variable x is from 0 to 10. So when your value falls um, under this, which is 5, then the membership function or the membership degree for this membership fun function singleton is 1. However, when you put the, the value here, say for example, around seven or eight, this one, therefore the membership degree is zero. So it's just a matter of zero and then one for this example. So this is the, the passes set or the rule that you already set and make um, in your example here, we set the value of X as always five. So therefore, if an input was provided by the user, which is not equal to five, then the degree of membership is zero. And if the value is equal to five, then the degree of membership is one. So that is easier for singleton. So this is actually the, um, the equation that we can use for singleton relative to my explanation. Another one is rectangular. So in rectangular, as you can see, the shape is a little is actually a rectangle. Okay. So in this example, we set the value of the membership function from three to seven. And again, the membership degree is from zero to one. So it means that if you have values here which are three or within the range of three to seven, then the membership degree is one. However, if your value there is from zero to at least 2.9, then the, the membership degree is zero. Also for 7.1 to 10, the membership degree is also zero. So what matters here is the set membership function, the values that you considered in setting your membership function. So that will define the membership degree. And this is again the equation that we can use for rectangular membership function. Another common application that we can use is the triangular membership function. I actually use triangular membership function and also trapezoidal membership function that's actually within the family of triangular membership function. So we have three in the family. We have the left shouldered, we have here the triangular, and the right shoulder. So the left and the right shoulder are actually similar to a trapezoid. So in here, we, ought, we actually have three membership functions. So this is the first membership function, the second, and the third. So it's up to you. You can actually have five membership functions, seven, or whatsoever. So how are we going to determine here the membership degree? If we put here the value, say, for example, which is um, 0.5, so it's somewhere here, therefore, the membership degree is 1. But if we put the value of x, which is equal, say, for example, to 7.5, so the membership degree is about at least um, 0.55 or 0.5 
0.55, okay? And then relative to y-axis, and then relative to x-axis, the value is around 7.2. So that is how are we going to read the membership degree depending on the type of the membership function that you will be using. So we have here actually the, the triangular membership function equation. Another common um, example of membership function is the Gaussian. So in the Gaussian, we can actually represent using this shape. And actually the, the concept there is actually the same. If you have the value here, it's um, the, the value of the membership degree is about 0.5 or 0.45. And then the x-axis is about 3. The value is 3. So same concept also, but most of the um, available membership functions that I read through and explored in IEEE, they make use of triangular, trapezoidal, and singleton. So seldom they use um, rectangular. Some make use of Gaussian. And this is actually the equation that we can use for the Gaussian. Another terminology after the membership function is the falsification. So what is now the falsification? Basically, it is a process of determining the degree to which a value belongs in a fase set. The value returned by a FASI membership function. So most variables in a FASI system have multiple membership function attached to them. So what makes it novel is that you as the researcher, you are the ones defining your own membership function. I can still remember I have um, one publication and I, named, I created my own membership function template and I termed that one as Caldas membership function template. So you can have your own membership function. So pacifying the variable involves passing the crest value through each membership function attached to that value. So similar to what we have in your um, subjects like logic circuits or discrete math, so fuzzy logic also applies um, and or and then not applications. So and is true if both parameters are true or true if either parameter is true, not reverses the truth of argument. So I believe this is very common to everyone. And we as especially computer engineers, we actually make use of this one from time to time. So for the and function, for the fuzzy logic, so we have here the truth table. So we have here two input variables, A and then B. And then, of course, we use the and operator, A and B. So the value for A and B here is you can get a value of one when you have two values of one for A and B. However, for fuzzy logic, we use the, the minimum of the two arguments as the term. But actually, the operation of the AND in fuzzy logic is the same with the AND operator in your logic circuits or discrete math. So what does it mean? So you get the minimum between A and then B. So what is the minimum between A and B? So it's still zero. Minimum of zero and then one is still zero. Minimum of one and then zero is zero. Minimum of one and one is one. Okay. So we make use of the, the term minimum in fuzzy logic. Not the multiplication application or operation. For the OR function, so similar again to our logic circuits, so we use A or B, and usually we only get a zero value output once we have two input um, variables which are both zero. But in fuzzy logic, we use the term max. Okay, so what is the maximum value between A and then B? So it's still zero, zero and one, 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 zero, one, one, one is one. Okay, so this, this should be A and B. It's not C, okay. So again, the application for our function is maximum. For the an operator, it is minimum. So we use those um, rules in fuzzy logic. For the not function, still the same, it's just the reverse reverses of the truth. When you have an input value of zero, it will become one, and one will become zero. But in fuzzy logic, we use one minus a, similar to probability. 
So what is the opposite of zero? It's actually one and one is zero. So we use those three operators, and, or, and not. That's why switching to fuzzy logic is not that difficult once you have good rules with you. Output of fuzzy logical functions are the same as Chris functions. So just calculate it differently. We handle the degrees of truth rather than absolute truths. The basis of fuzzy rule-based systems. Ayan. So we'll now be talking about how are we going to formulate the fuzzy rules. Similar to your truth table, if you can remember, you also have your antecedents and consequence. So antecedents, basically, these are the input conditions and the consequence, these are just the outputs. So it both deal with partial truths, antecedents match fuzzy sets, consequence assign fuzzy sets. Fuzzy rules can have weightings from zero and then one. And the importance of rule is very important. And we usually set that one to one. So usually for the membership function, we use range from zero and then one. But you can actually use um, actual values. For example, you would like to deal with temperature. So you actually use 24 degrees. You actually use 35 degrees or 40 degrees. It's OK. However, in order for you to fit that in the other um, variables that you'll be using in your fuzzy logic, so for example, you also have relative humidity, you needed to normalize those values. So what does it mean when I term normalize? So 0 to 100 is also the same with 0 to 1. So therefore, if you have value of 50 as input from the user, then it's actually equivalent to 0.5. So that is actually the normalization process. You can actually program that one as well. I will give now a short example. How are we going to apply passy logic? And then later on, I'll be playing a short video clip so that you can realize visually how fuzzy logic works. So this example is related to restaurant tipping example. So say, for example, you will be taking orders from a specific restaurant. So what will make you decide whether you will be giving a tip or not? So that is the problem that you are trying to solve here. The antecedent variables that you needed to consider are the following. You need to consider the quality of service and the quality of food. So basically, these are the two main items that you need to consider when you would like to give tips. So if the service is good and the food is good, maybe you can give a better tip compared if the service is poor and the quality of the food is very poor as well. So of course, you will not also give a tip. And the consequent variables, of course, is the tip because that is the, the output that we are trying to achieve. Now, I have here the FASI rules that I have set um, I linguistically classify the service. The service can be poor, can be good, and could be excellent. Okay, so I only have three linguistic classifications. I even use the universe of this course from zero to 10. So it's not yet normalized. Again, when you normalize, you use zero to one. So in this example, the universe of this course is from zero to 10. And the membership degree is always the same from zero to one. So you create your rule here, just like this, okay? This is one membership function using Gaussian, another membership function, and another membership function. So this membership function was created given the knowledge about service relative to poor, good, and then excellent. Another a membership function can be created relative to food because we have two antecedents to consider. As I have said, we have the service and the food. The first one applies for the service and the other one applies for the food. In this, in this example, I have used trapezoidal for the rancid and delicious and triangular for the good, but I actually have three as well. Take note here that the universe of this course is from 0 to 10. It's and actually the same with the service from 0 to 10. It, it should always be the same. 
If not the same, you have to normalize them. The food I classified as rancid, good, and then delicious. Now we already have the membership functions. So we use the Gaussian, we use the trapezoidal, we use the triangular, and then we identify them using linguistic classification. The next thing to do is to set the rules. And then after setting the rules, you can get the, the consequent or the output. So now I have here the FASI rules for the taping. Okay. So this now applies to the output because we already have two input variables, service and then food. Now we have here another triangular membership functions for the tip, which is the output. For the output, the, the tip percentage is used from 0 to 25%. So say, for example, the assumption here is that, say, for example, you have 1,000 pesos. So you will only have to multiply your 1,000 pesos with the, the classification here that you can get when you already set the, the rules after um, putting the, the values in the rule-based system that you created. So in this example, we have your cheap, average, and then generous. So it only means that um, you your tip is cheap. If the 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 tip is cheap, so you can give only around zero to ten percent of your money. And then if average around seven point five to at least seventeen point five, that is the range. And also for the generous, about fifteen up to twenty five percent. Okay. So this is setting this passive rules should have a basis or reference. Definitely, if you have, if you can use um, 0 to 100%. So it's beyond, um, it's beyond the normal that you give 100% you give of the tip. Okay, so usually you give only from 0 to 25%. Now I will be setting now the rules relative to our input variables, which is food and then service and then output, which is chip. Okay, take note of this PASI rules. So this is the rules that we set for tipping system. If the service is poor or the food is rancid, then tip is chip. Make sense? Of course. The service is poor and the food is not that good, then of course you can give, but it's cheap. If the service is good without yet considering the food, then the chip, then the tip rather is average. However, if the service is excellent or the food is delicious, then the tip is generous. So that is how are we going to set the rules in Passy Logic. So you now already have a problem solving control methodology to solve um, this problem related to restaurant tipping. So that's actually one example, but you can actually apply this one to any other application or field that you would like to use. Another consideration is to use the FASI inference. So it infers FASI conclusions from the FASI facts and matches facts against FASI antecedents. So we actually have a formula for the FASI logic, for the FASI inference. And as I have said, um, you actually don't need to memorize the formula for the FASI inference, the center of gravity, because in the MATLAB FASI logic toolbox, you can actually use um, two different FASI inference system. And the name of the FIS systems are Sadema Mamdani and Takagi Sugeno. Sometimes we call that one as Mamdani style and then Sugeno style. The only difference is that in Mamdani, you actually use different types of membership function. But in Sugeno, for the output, you only use singleton. So that's actually the main difference between the two. But they actually use um, center of gravity formula to compute for the results or the output. If you will derive the membership function yourself, you can actually do that. I even do that as well. 
but it will require you um, coding the fuzzy logic from, from the scratch, just like what I did for Verilog, the HDL, C++, Excel macro program, and even Arduino IDE. In some cases for Arduino IDE, you can use library of fuzzy logic. But if you will be using fuzzy logic toolbox in MATLAB, so it's very easy. So you can actually click and drag there and you can get the results already without um, rewiring or without deeply understanding the formulas being used in fuzzy inference systems. And then with the fuzzy pi, as I have said, how are we going to the fuzzy pi? We use the formula of center of gravity and the mean of maxima. So this is the formula for the center of gravity for the, the fascification method when you are trying to get the results. Okay. So before I proceed with a comparison between fuzzy logic and neural network, as I promised, I'll be showing to you a short video clip related to fuzzy logic. And I hope um, it can be heard in your side. I will be playing it now. Sorry, um, can, can you hear the video? Can somebody um, voice out? Not yet, sir. Can you? Mahina, sir. sir. Hello? Sir, wala po. Sir, wala po, sir. Okay. Sorry, sorry. How am I going to do that? Wait, sorry. share a sound. Let me know if you can hear her. Huh? Thank you. Let's see how an intelligent robot tackles the ah, Okay, I will start again. Thank you so much. Welcome. In this video, we talk about fuzzy logic, a tool engineers and scientists use intelligence into robots. Sorry, sorry. Hindi naman nakashare yung video. Nakashare yung sound, pero... Naka-powerpoint pa rin po. Ah, okay. Teka. Thank you for commenting on that, ha? Wait lang. Paano ba yun? Stop recording. Naka PowerPoint pa din. Uh, hello, uh, okay. Sir Caldo. Yes, hello, sir. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, what uh, you can yo, there you go. Yeah, we see it on we see it now. Oh. Okay, po. thank you, sir. All right, very much welcome, po. Ah, po. sir. Uh, five minutes. Can you hear Be before I repeat? Unfortunately, the X sometimes turn. Can you hear it? Uh, okay, yeah, thank po. you. Thank you, sir. Okay, po. Welcome. In this video, we talk about fuzzy logic, a tool engineers and scientists use to add intelligence into robots, video games, and even in household appliances. Fuzzy logic is fantastic as it solves complex problems by using simple rules. Let's see how an intelligent robot tackles the challenging task of boiling an egg using fuzzy logic. Boiled eggs. In, huh? Sorry. 
Hindi ko na po play yung videos nyo. Pero hindi po nakashare yung stream. Sound lang. Oh. Sorry. Parang parang kanina nag-okay na. Hindi pala. Sorry po. Okay. I'll be... Sorry. Where is it? Stop share. Ulitin ko na lang. Chef, Kit, kita na ba? Ang tips. Point notes. Things robot. Mm. Yung pinaka-file ko ba yung pinaka-file? Yung pinaka... Sorry, sir, ha? Et, eto, nakikita niyo po yung screen ko? Opo. Ito, sir, yung Opo. file. Oo nga. Pero hindi po ata siya nag... Hindi nag-share screen. Yung pinaka-video. Oh. Hmm. Audio lang. Saan kaya dito, sir, yun? Sorry naman. Uh, uh, maybe you can try po uh, i-share yung whole screen nyo. Then, max out na lang po yung pinaka-video. Full screen. Pero ba't yung PowerPoint? Okay naman. Pag yung PowerPoint, visible naman po, ano? Uh, yes. Yes. Pero nag, nung nag-switch na ako, ayan, yung mga nagalaw-galaw ako right now, eto, hindi, hindi pa rin kita? Hindi pa. Okay. Sige po. Um, anyway, um, itry ko na lang ding isend muna kay Brian and then ikukontinue ko muna yung discussion and then if mapiplay later on ni Brian, I would appreciate it. Okay lang ba? Uh, okay po. Okay. Sige. Oh, too large. Okay. Anyway, sige po. Pasensya na po kung hindi natin mapiplay yung video right now. But anyway, I'll be continuing na lang the discussion. Um, yung content lang naman po ng video for your information, everyone. Um, basically, it's um, related po siya sa egg robot making using facile logic. So in that example, um, we have the, the, the chef or the, the chef as the expert. And then somebody asks that expert on what particular formula she will use in order to formulate an egg boiling robot. So that's one example. And another video that I have is about the basketball. When you decide whether a person is good enough to play basketball or not, or whether a person should consider boxing instead because of the tall issues. Okay. So let's now proceed to the fuzzy logic versus neural network. So as I have said earlier, so another type of computational intelligence is the neural network. We actually have different types. Um, another discussion could be related to artificial intelligence. Another might be related to genetic algorithm. But I would only try to explain here the difference between fuzzy logic and neural network. I actually even tried to implement um, different research works using fuzzy logic and neural network and try to compare them. And I give and I get same results actually. So how does a neural network work? So the, the common thing about fuzzy logic and neural networks, they are both uh, modeling using the human brain. So you, uh, you actually needed to have some decisions through our minds 
and then it both used to create behavioral systems. And on this right side, um, for neural network, it's more of mimicking how our neurons work. So that's why the term there is neural network. So we actually use the weights and the sigmoid here to, to come up with the results for the neural network. Unlike for the fuzzy logic that we use um, rule-based systems. We actually have different algorithms under neural network, just like the backpropagation algorithm, supervised learning algorithm. So those are different algorithms related to neural network. In terms of complexity, so I think it's more complex to use neural network compared to fuzzy logic because you needed to consider a lot of algorithms compared to fuzzy logic. However, if you will be using neural network toolbox in MATLAB, it's actually very easy to implement neural network as well, similar to fuzzy logic toolbox in MATLAB application. So this is an example of fuzzy logic and control systems. So fuzzy logic provides a more efficient and resourceful way to solve control systems. Some examples are temperature controller and the anti-lock brake system or the ABS. So here we have here a temperature controller example. So we have here a problem that change the, change the speed of a heater fan based off the room temperature and humidity. So the idea there is the output is the fan speed and the input variables are the temperature and the humidity. And then the linguistic classifications that we use for humidity are low, medium, and then high. However, for the temperature, we make use of the cold, cool, warm, and then hot. You will decide the linguistic classifications. This is just an example. You can use five for the humidity. You can use seven or 10, whatever for the temperature. And of course, it will defend the, the, the output for the fan speed, which is your consequent, will depend on the rules that you will be setting relative to your input variables. So in this example, what we are trying to explain here is that if the temperature is cold and the humidity is low, then the fan speed should be medium. For this example, if the temperature is hot and then the humidity is high, then the fan speed should be zero. In this example, if the temperature is cool and the humidity is medium, then the fan speed should be low. So again, um, for this temperature controller, you need someone expert to give you the rules when you have two input variables, temperature and humidity, what will be the fan speed? So I believe that most of your research works applies control systems methodology. So you can actually apply this FASI associative memory matrix table for your implementation if you will be using FASI logic. What is now the, or what are now the benefits of using FASI logic? So as you can see here, the, the workflow is much more simpler and simplified or optimized when we use FASI logic. This is the traditional approach that we are using. And I believe that most of us, especially our teachers and me in my thesis works as well before, when I graduate, before I graduate CPE, I follow these steps. So you understand the physical system and control requirements. So you will actually do that as well, even in fuzzy logic. So there's no problem with that. Sometime you will develop a linear model of plants, sensors, and actuators, if, especially if you will be controlling something and you also have, you actually have some feedback system. And you will be also determining a simplified controller for control theory. If you can still remember your control systems, you have proportional integral, proportional derivative, proportional integral derivative, or the PID controller. And then you will develop an algorithm for the controller or a mathematical model and then you simulate, debug, and implement and design. So that is the traditional approach that we are actually following. But using fuzzy logic, you don't need to do higher uh, mathematics or mathematical modeling. So you do the design using um, fuzzy rules. And then you simulate, debug, and implement the design. That's it. And you can get um, almost the same results. Not that accurate as this one, but you can actually control 
um, relative to your uh, expected output. So this is an example of the anti-lock brake system or the ABS. So you can actually implement um, fuzzy logic for this application because this is nonlinear and dynamic in nature. I would suggest if the if the problem is just linear, so you can you don't need to use any more fuzzy logic. You can directly use a certain formula for that purpose. But if non-linear and dynamic in nature, and it's so hard for you to formulate or create an equation or formula, or a mathematical model to solve the problem, then I suggest you use fuzzy logic for, for your convenience. So we have here four in um, we have here the inputs for the Intel Pass ABS. We have the brake for WD, ignition, feedback, wheel speed. So basically, these are just the data inputs. And then you have the main program here to control for the process. How are you going to control your inputs or how, or how are you going to transform your inputs into its desired outputs? It's just like an IPO model here. So we have here for the main program, you use the fuzzy logic. The inference engine, it could be Mamdani, it could be Sugeno fast inference system. And then we have two outputs, the PWM and the error dump. So it's actually possible also to have two outputs or three more outputs, but commonly we only use one output. But for this example, of course, we need to consider the PWM and the error dump. And in some cases, it will be feedback pa to the inputs. Okay, just like what I did for the DC-DC back boost converter system. I'll be showing that one later on. Fuzzy logic can even be applied in other fields like in business or hybrid modeling or expert systems. I can still remember I have one fuzzy logic application. I predict the, the I predict and assess whether um, board courses in engineering will, will pass the board exam or not. So that's one fuzzy logic application I did. And then hybrid modeling, it's just a combination of automated and, and manual. So a hybrid modeling example is implementation, say for example, in Arduino microcontroller. So you use Arduino for the hardware part, but in, inside the Arduino, when you do your control, you don't use the PID anymore. You use fuzzy logic for the implementation purpose. So we call that one as hybrid and expert systems for computational intelligence purposes as well. So as a conclusion, fuzzy logic provides an alternative way to represent linguistic and subjective attributes of the real world in computing. It is able to be applied to control systems and other applications in order to improve the efficiency and simplicity of the design process. I would like to give you some idea here, some approach, whether you are going to use fuzzy logic or not, because uh, maybe um, this fuzzy logic may not be applicable in your current work or current research work or the, the research work that you would like to, to do in the long run. So that's why you needed to understand how are you going to approach um, fuzzy logic. So this is just an assessment as to whether fuzzy logic is applicable for the given application. Evaluation criteria. Has fuzzy logic been previously applied to a similar application with success? Even in your defense, your panel members will always ask you, do you have relevant studies that will support your research work? Even your professors will ask that because that is very important. Because you, if you are trying to solve some something that is not yet um, known to anybody, then it will be a suicide in your part. So of course, you have some similar application with a relevant success. What is good example of this? One good example is when I do a research in Taal Lake, I assess the quality of the water there using fuzzy logic. So I don't have any reference in the Philippines doing that, but I found a, one reference. I saw that in IEEE paper and it is applic applicable to a river. So they apply that one to assess the quality of the river, the, the water quality of the river. So I use that as reference to do the fuzzy logic. So you have some reference for this purpose for it to be successful as well. Is it a multivariable type control problem? As I have said, kung ito po ay non-linear, so 
you can use um, fuzzy logic, but if you only have two input variables and then ano pa siya linear, so you don't need to use fuzzy logic anymore. It should be multi-variable type. Do operators and engineers possess knowledge about any relevant interdependencies of the process variables? Oh, going back to my example, when I study about the quality of the water in Taal Lake, I'm not, a psych, uh, I'm not an expert in terms of um, water quality assessment, right? So what I did there is I go to B4 in the fishery school there, and then I interviewed someone, and then I get idea from them, how am I going to create the rules for my FASI logic? Can further knowledge about the process behavior be gained by observation or experiments? I even did this one. I get the, the measures, the current measures that I have right now relative to dissolved oxygen, relative to ammonia, relative to pH, and so on, turbidity. So I gather all of the experiments they, that they did, and then I use that as an input to my FASI systems when I try to do the testings and fine-tuning of my FASI logic system. Is it difficult to obtain a mathematical model from the process? So in my example, yes, definitely. There's no direct formula to assess the quality of the water. You needed to, to do some mathematical model for that purpose. And fuzzy logic is an easier tool compared to using high-level mathematics for that computation. Okay. So usage. So next is you will define the control objectives and criteria. So you need to understand what am I trying to control? What do I have to do to control the system? What kind of response do I need? What are the possible or probable system failure modes? So you need to consider all of those stops along with the relationships of your input and output. You need to choose the minimum number of variables per input to the fuzzy logic engine. As I have said earlier, for my example, you have different water quality parameters, hundreds. But you only have to select what are the most critical water quality parameters that you can consider in your monitoring. So especially also applicable in your research work, so you can actually choose the minimum number of variables. Then you use the rule-based structure of the FASI logic. As I have said, we have the FASI associative memory matrix or the FAM table. You need to break the control problem down into a series of rules. And then from there, you can now create the membership function. You can use triangular, um, trapezoidal, Gaussian, define the meaning or the values of the input and output terms used in the rules. And then after that, this is the challenging part you need to test. Does it fit already your output? You need to evaluate, you need to fine tune and then retest and retest until such time you already have the good rules and good combination of your membership functions. This is an example of the rule matrix as I have said earlier or presented earlier. You can create something like this one. It's just a table. You have the two input variables here and the output here. So fuzzy logic deals with uncertainty. If you are uncertain, how are you going to solve the problem? Then fuzzy logic is best for that. It allows degrees of truth, allows partial membership in sets, fuzzy membership functions that describe degrees of membership in fuzzy sets, and many different types of membership function exist. So it's up to you what specific membership function are you going to use. So again, pacification is just determining the degree of membership. When we determine to what specific degree this particular um, passive value belongs, so that is pacification. And passive logic extends Boolean operators to handle partial truths. Remember, we have the AND operator, the OR operator, and the NOT operator. FASI rules match FASI antecedents to FASI consequence. So that's why we have the FASI associative memory matrix or the truth table for that purpose and the rule-based system. Degree to which antecedents are true determine the degree of support. And FASI logic functions are used to determine this one. FASI inference involves calculating an output FASI set. So again, we have two different FASI inference systems. 
Ma'am Dani and then Sugeno style. So again, Ma'am Dani makes use of different triangular membership functions for the output. However, for the Sugeno, we only use singleton for the output. So these are the two common composition methods, but the most commonly used method to compute for the crisp output value is the center of gravity formula or the COG. This one, the center of gravity or the COG. Okay, so I think I'm done with the first part, but I would like also to share with you some research endeavors that I did. It will not take any longer anymore so that I can entertain questions if you have any. So, I'll be sharing you some of the passylogic um, publications and presentations that I did, some research works that I already did, so you can get some idea how did I use or implement this one. Then after this one, I'll be showing to you some diagrams that I've used in my presentations abroad. So this is actually my very first um, research work related to passylogic. This is very close to my heart. So this is one of my coursework when, I, when I'm still studying in De La Salle for my master's in ECE. So I, I presented this one in an international conference, TENCON 2012, held in the Philippines. Fortunately, in Cebu, Philippines, it's easy to get there. So it's sponsored by DOST and ERDT scholarship as well. It was entitled Fasiology Control of Water Quality Monitoring and Surveillance for Aquatic Life preservation in Taal Lake. So just to give you some glimpse or idea about this topic, so as I have said earlier, I go to the BPAR, I interviewed some experts there, some scientists, and then I get the, determine the rules for the identified um, critical water parameters. And then I was able to get or assess the quality of the water using the passive logic. So triangular membership function is the, is the membership function that I have used. I even derive the membership function. So I call that one as Caldas membership function template. Another one presented in the 8th ERDT conference at Radisson Blue Hotel is water quality assessment again using backpropagation neural network for aquatic life preservation in Taal Lake. So the idea there is I'm trying to compare my results using fuzzy logic with um, neural network. So this time I use backpropagation neural network. So it's a different um, session. It's so wide or so broad to discuss to you about neural network. But I have used here neural network toolbox in MATLAB. And then when I compare the result of the backpropagation neural network and fuzzy logic, both for same application, I get same results. Next is, it's a very simple example about fuzzy logic derivation and simulation of a three-variable solar water heater using MATLAB fuzzy logic toolbox. So this time I have used naman a MATLAB fuzzy logic toolbox. So later on, I will be trying to show you also how how MATLAB Passive Logic Toolbox works, how to create that one. I presented this one in the LSU Manila, so six international conference on humanoid nanotechnology, information technology, communication and control, environment management 2013 or HNSM. It's an IEEE paper. It's an international conference as well presented in De La Salle. Okay, another one. This is actually one of the work of my advice. So... This is an application in the medical field. Type 1 passive classification of pain severity or pain assessment. So the idea there is you assess how painful it is, how severe the pain it is. So use, we use Ampassive Logic for that purpose. Also presented in HNSM 2013 by my student. Of course, I'm with him. Next, this one is I presented in De La Salle University, Das Marinas, a research week. Way back 2013, I assessed the passing of engineering board courses in LPU Laguna using fuzzy logic technology because during that time, um, we have very low passing rate for ECE and EE in LPU Laguna. So we needed to do some assessment. So we use um, passive logic for that purpose as well. 
Next is the simulation of passive logic controller for DC-DC back and bus converter in three programming platforms presented in 14 APMs in Cebu Philippines International Conference as well. So this one, I apply passive logic for DC-DC back and bus converter. And then in three programming platforms, because I implement using BHDL, using DevC++, using Excel macro program, and then I compare the results and the results are the same. Next, um, this one is my very first international or, or my very first presentation abroad with my advisor. This is actually my thesis for my master's design development and implementation of a passive logic controller for DC-DC back and bus converter in an FPGA. So I implemented passive logic in FPGA for DC-DC back and DC-DC bus converter. So presented in Natrang, Vietnam, available also in IEEE Explore. If you can search there, my research work, you can download this one as well. Another is passive logic simulation of DC DC bus converter using MATLAB passive logic toolbox. So I have used MATLAB passive logic toolbox to simulate bus converter for DC DC. I presented this one in Jeju Island, Korea in 2014. This one um, published already in an international journal. So I just published this um, predictive assessment of passive engineering board courses in a journal. I even presented that one in international conference in Jeju, Korea, along with this research paper. And then another I presented in Paase about FLC-based indoor air quality assessment for ASHRAE standard conformance. So this time I use um, PASI logic for indoor air quality assessment, and then I have reference from the ASHRAE presented in Delasal also. Another one, this is actually a product of my advisee, electrical engineering students. And then their thesis work is related to ground grid integrity testing. And then I help them using PASI logic on how they are going to, to assess the integrity of the grounding system using PASI logic. So it was um, presented by them as well in Delasal. So I guided them in their presentation. And then I also presented in Tokyo, Japan. This is a prestigious conference with Springer publication, FLC-based indoor air quality assessment for ASHRAE standard conformance and ground grid integrity testing. I presented also this one in Tokyo, Japan. And then this is the publication in Springer, lecture notes in electrical engineering. So I will, if you have, if you can download also, you can download my research works there in Industrial Engineering Management Science and Application Copyright 2015. Another presentation I did is in Penang, Malaysia, FLC-based renewable wind energy viability assessment in Central Luzon, Philippines, one of my coursework in Adamson University. So I presented this one. Um, I assessed the viability of implementing wind energy in the Philippines, especially in Central Luzon, using passive logic. Okay, so now I'll be showing to you some outputs about some researches that I already did. Of course, I will not be explaining this one one by one. So this one, this is my keynote speech in Bangkok, Thailand, when they invited me to be the keynote speaker. And then I presented this research work. So just to give you an idea related to fuzzy logic. So this is the black diagram. How did I do the fuzzy logic controller? So we have here the knowledge base. And then the decision making, the depacification. And then from here on, I have here the DC-DC converter, and then I have an error amplifier, an error corrector, and then it will be feedback again to the system until such time that I was able to get correct output or voltage values for my back and then boost converter because that is what I'm trying to, to solve. Me. Yes, hello? Uh, hindi po na present yung black diagram. Ah, okay. Ah, sorry. Is it visible now? No. 
Not yet. Not yet. Thank you. Thank you, Hap. Thank you for batting in. Let me know if it is already visible. Oh. Is the slide related to design and development implementation already visible? Not yet, sir. Okay, okay. Anyway, I'll be sharing again. Sorry for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now, I think it's visible. Yes, it? yes, sir, okay. yes, sir, yes. So, sorry for that. And thank yes, you for having in. Ha? Okay, so this is design, development, and implementation of Fasi Logic Controller for DC DC back and bus converter in an FPGA. So, this is one of my keynote speech in Bangkok, Thailand. So, I guess I have students here doing um, computer system architecture. So I use VHDL here, not Verilog. But you can actually use Verilog also for implementing Fasi Logic Controller. And since I will not be explaining it thoroughly, I will just be giving you idea what is the, the desired um, output for this particular project. So specifically, I described the fussiness in DC-DC back and bus converter. So when you, when you use the term fussiness, I created actually my own membership function to compute for the DC-DC back and bus converter. And then I presented the derivation of fussy control rules. How do I um, set the basic converter circuit for the back and bus converter using fussy logic? And then... I will also develop modeling variable for DC output voltage using MATLAB Passy Logic Toolbox. Dev C++ or C++ or C, I, you can use Passy Logic using this. Excel macro program to my students in OOP, I even use Passy Logic using Excel macro program for back and bus converters. And then I develop a hardware model of Passy Logic controller for variable output voltage DC DC back of 3.3 volts down to 2, vo 2 volts input voltage levels to 1.5 voltage output. So it means I only have um, input values from 3.3 to 2 volts input. And then my target for the back converter is to lower down the voltage and get an output of 1.5 when you have these two input voltage levels. So that is what I'm trying to control. And for the boost converter, I have 3.3 to 5 volts input values, and then my target is to get an output voltage of 6.6. .6. And then I will compare and contrast the performance of the FASI control system in three different programming platforms, implement an FPGA-based FASI controller for DC-DC converter, because I also have a hardware here. I implemented the FASI logic DC-DC converter in an FPGA board. I think I used Vertex 5 during that time. And then I test and evaluate the performance of the passive control system in terms of load, white LED, and line regulation. I also have um, back converter circuit or boost converter circuit for me to check on this. Okay. And now, so that you have the idea, I'll just be showing you the, this is actually the flow chart of the project. So I actually use Silinx ISE to simulate in the model sim. And then when I already get the results, then that's the time I download in an FPGA board. And this is the FASI logic controller part. How did, how did I implement this? I coded this one in BHDL. And then this is the one that I'm explaining earlier about the black diagram of the PASI logic. This is the PASI logic controller. In the PASI logic controller, of course, it requires inputs from the user. And in this example, what makes it different is that it has already a feedback, an error amplifier, an error corrector. And it will be feedback again to the input. And of course, once you feedback to the input, it has an effect on the output as well. So that is the, the very crucial thing about this one because I needed actually to fine tune the voltage output while changing the, the feedback in the input. Okay, and then these are just the input parameters that I have used 
for the back converter and the boost converter, voltage error and the change of error. I have two input variables, but these are just, these are feedback. And then the output are negatively big, negatively small, zero area, positively small, and positively big. This is an example implementation that I did using MATLAB Passy Logic Toolbox. In MATLAB Passy Logic Toolbox, you can simply click and drag this one. These are the input variables. And these are the membership function. You can already draw that one. And this is my output. I use Sugeno style. This is just a single ton. So for my duty cycle. And then this is basically a trial test when I do for the back converter. And this one is a trial test when I do for the boost converter. So the output is the duty cycle. And the duty cycle will be feedback again to my input. This one is the PASI associative memory matrix that I've created for the bus and bus con back converter. So this is the rules that I've created for the error and for the change in error, both for the back and then the bus converter. This is the implementation that I did, the simulation result using C++. Okay, so. This is for the bus converter, and this is for the back converter. So you can see here the number of iteration. I can already get an output of 6.6 for only four iterations. Can you imagine how fast it is using passy logic? For the, this one is for the back converter. I only need seven iterations to get this hard output of 1.51. Okay, so this is the assessment, the checking of the results for the Dev C++. Just the result. This one is the, for the Excel macro program. I created an Excel macro program, uh, another tool, this one. And then you can just um, input here the value of, you can select whether boost converter or back converter. And then you can get the results there and it can already judge whether it is beyond the limit or not. Okay, I even created an add-in for this purpose to generate the DC-DC binary generator and how to initialize that one because we are talking about here about binary strings. Ha? So, of course, um, decimal is different from binary, so you needed to do some conversions for that purpose. It's actually difficult. And then this is actually the RTL schematic that I did. This is the high-level design for my students the top level design. So I have where the error generator, the normalizer, the fuzzy final, the back and the fuzzy final to and the sample corrector. This one is for the boost converter. Of course, I did not include any more the low level design because the circuit is too complicated and the VHDL code is very long as well. And this is the sample um, set up when I implement in the FPGA board. Of course, I saw the results using the oscilloscope and some back end bus converter circuit here. And then I experiments and analyze the results there. And of course, I got favorable results. I, I even compared using correlation coefficient between the different programming languages. And they are perfectly correlated with each other. And then I concluded already the, the research work. Okay, so another example, maybe this is the last. Okay, so another example is about FLC-based renewable wind energy viability assessment in Central Luzon, Philippines. This is also interesting because um, my reference there is I actually read through a lot of research works available um, related to wind energy. And then Central Luzon is one of the very potential for wind energy application in the Philippines. So what I did there is I present the relevant literature reviews on wind energy resource. I develop and illustrate a model of passive logic for representing viability of wind resource and construct membership function and derive passive control systems 
or renewable wind energy viability analysis, and then I simulate the performance of passive system. I will not go through with the literature review anymore. It's very long. And then um, based from the review of literature that I did, that's why it's very important. That's the idea there that I was able to create a wind viability assessment using the wind resource density, other wind resource parameters, the site-related criteria, and then these are basically the linguistic outputs that I've set. So this is an example of the Sugeno style FIS for wind viability analysis using matlab Passy logic toolbox. This is the triangular membership function that I have created. This is the output. And these are the rules. So you can actually use rule editor in MATLAB Passy logic toolbox. It's very easy. And then I have here the scoring sheet of selected sites in Central Luzon because I needed to compare whether my predictions are acceptable or not. This one, so as per assessment, so very good for Sual Pangasinan and Karanglan Nueva Ecija. However, good only for Sampaloc Rizal, Caleraya Laguna, Pantabangan Nueva Ecija, and Puncan Digdig Nueva Ecija. I did not go there anymore. I just get um, relevant literature. And if you will be implementing wind energy, we suggest or I suggest you, you use um, or you do implementation in Sual Pangasinan and Karanglan Nueva Ecija because the score in the linguistic classification are very high. And these are just simulation results using the rule viewer in MATLAB Passy Logic Toolbox again. And I just concluded. So I actually have 216 Passy rules in order for me to get the optimum results and fine tune results for this um, wind viability assessment in Central Los Angeles, Philippines. Okay. So I think um, that would be all for my side. Thank you again for listening to my talk and sorry for some inconveniences. So if you have some questions, I would like now to give the floor to our moderator or to our advisor so that um, we can facilitate questions from your side. Thank you again and God bless us all. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Engineer Caldo, for that Thank wonderful you, talk. Uh, guys, if you have any questions, feel free to post it on the chat box. Since we do have a couple of minutes left, if you have any questions, feel free to post it on the chat box so um, Engineer Carlo can be able to view it to, for him to answer those questions. Don't be shy, guys. <laughs> if you have any questions, feel free to post it now since we do have a couple of minutes left. All right, I don't see anyone posting any questions. I think uh, Engineer Caldo was able to discuss it thoroughly and um, clearly in reference of introduction to fuzzy logic. I know some of the um, participants right now, the main reason that they joined this um, uh, specific webinars uh, in general Caldo is they don't have any heads up about uh, fuzzy logic. Even me on my end, to be honest, I don't have any um, you know, idea about the fuzzy logic and it's not further discussed throughout if to our um, uh, education through college. It, it, Fuzzy logic is not even discussed, right? It's just a heads up. So we're truly grateful and thankful to Engineer Caldo for um, being one of our resource speakers to further discuss the fuzzy, uh, introduction to fuzzy logic in its application. So right now, um, let's go ahead and proceed with the um, awarding of the certificate. Allow me to uh, read the um, certificate. Hold on. Um, Trimex Colleges, uh, Scopes, together with um, Engineering Department, uh, this certificate is awarded to Engineer Rhino B. Caldo in grateful acknowledgement and sincere appreciation 
for a valuable service rendered as resource speaker in the webinar entitled Introduction to Fuzzy Logic and its Applications with the theme Championing Professionals in the New Normal, the World of Computer Engineering. Uh, hereby signed by Dr. Rito A. Camigla Jr., our VP for Academics and Student Services, and our uh, Engineering Department Head, Engineer Kerbin R. De Mesa. Uh, Engineer Calder, you will be receiving um, a PDF copy of this. I uh, will be sending out to your email. Thank you so much, sir, and thank you so much to everyone for attending today's webinar. God bless us all. all right. Thank you so much again, Mr. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Engineer Caldo, um, hopefully we are Thank able to Thank you, sir. for further um, webinars that we'll have in the future. So, yep. Um, and we do have some couple of minutes left, guys. Uh, here's what we're going to do in reference of the uh, raffle. Um, actually, um, what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and um, a separate live uh, Facebook Live, and we'll be posting it to our um, Scopes um, page, uh, group, or GC. Then if ever um, some of you are not able to uh, view the Facebook Live, uh, all the winners will be uh, contacting you directly to the information uh, on the registration. You're able to you're able to get your email and your phone number. We'll be the one to contact you directly. So we will have five winners, and each uh, one will be getting 200. It's either through um, Eload or through GCash. So it's up to you guys to contact me about that. So and again, um, to all the participants, uh, thank you so much for participating and. Um, would like to um, call on our uh, head uh, engineer, um, Kerbin De Mesa, uh, for any words, sir. Okay, so good morning. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Good morning, sir. I'm so. First and foremost, along the engineer, um, Reynald Caldo, for his valuable insights and giving uh, his valuable time actually for, for us to something new. Basically, of course, it will be a helpful tool for all of you, specifically for those having their um, proposals or research during uh, this particular pandemic it will be a helpful for all of us even though of course in professionals we know the puzzle logic but for those students of course in some of the curriculum are not part in terms of having the puzzle logic but basically it's one of the most vital um, part and to be created in order for you to propose system that can be beneficial for the society and um I would like also to thank each and every one of you for participating in this particular uh, webinar. Uh, we learn a lot. And you can, uh, can also be a successful someday in terms of the, uh, creating different systems that will be beneficial for all the companies or even interviews we are actually been having with, despite we are experiencing a pandemic. Still, thank you very much to all the officers. Of course, I would like to greet um, to all my students, to all my friends. Actually, we are uh, having an international one. Um, to, we also have special guests also from um, Canada, Montreal, Canada. Let's have engineer Steven Arellana and also to my friends and colleagues out there in Barcelona Spain also joining us in FB live and here also inside the zoom and to our students of senior high school coming from Santa Rosa high school and for Vinian Valenzuela if I'm not mistaken from Cebu also, they're also messaging with me. They're actually actually watching. And from friends from Australia and Asian countries, thank you so much also for watching and joining in this particular uh, webinar. So to the scopes officers, and of course, To all who participated in this event, thank you very much. May you learn, may you learn something new from today as uh, 
giving you an insights and technical knowledge by our very own one of the faculty of the engineering. So thank you so much to all and have a great day to all. And of course, God bless us all and take care always, everyone, as we all know that the COVID having actually surged and of course in uh, in the Philippines. So hoping and praying for all of you to be safe. And of course, despite pandemic, of course, everything must be moved forward. Uh, keep doing a great things. So thank you so much and and see you by upcoming webinars. Basically, I think we have last three. The for April 18 and the last two technical one, which is actually came from which actually became adopted by Aerobotica Philippines, which the two technical one for part one. Thank you so much to all of you, and of course, see you soon once again in the succeeding webinars. Then giving the floor for the moderator once again. All right, thank you so much. Uh... Thank you, sir. Sir, um, the message. And before uh, we end uh, this session, guys, I would like you to know that we're having a, um, like a, a survey. Uh, this will um, will be able to generate your um, certificate. So everyone um, should uh, should answer this survey, um, guys. Um, the link will be sent on the chat box right now, and also we'll be sending it to your emails. Um, kindly answer the um, survey. Uh, it's just a quick survey, guys, uh, in, in reference of your um, experience during the webinar. And uh, once you answer the um, survey, then we'll be able to generate your certificates Then we'll be sending out to your email. So guys, again, the uh, link is on the chat box. Kindly, if you can be able to copy the link, uh, that will be great. That, that is um, sent by Mr. Manuel Guerola. So kindly, um, Check it out, okay? Click the link, answer the quick survey for us to generate your certificates. And your certificates will be given to you um, about uh, one to two weeks since uh, we'll be needing to send it one by one for you, okay? So um, again, uh, thank you so much for uh, the te my team, uh, the committee for this uh, today's webinar. Uh, kudos guys, a uh, 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 job well done. And- So let uh, me inject for something. Um... Um, I would just like also to acknowledge all the presence of uh, our faculty members, not only for, for other um, departments. So thank you so much for supporting uh, this uh, engineering webinar. So still keep on supporting us. And thank you so much for your valuable and support to our students. Thank you so much. For and yeah, before we end this, I uh, just would like to uh, greet one, uh, two of my uh, team, uh, Monique Tingido and Brian Capadocia. Happy birthday, guys. Happy birthday. Happy ECQ birthday. Happy birthday, guys. <laughs> so, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, again, uh, I'll Happy remind Happy birthday, and Brian. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And thank so, you so birthday. <laughs> belated happy birthday. So guys, um, again, uh, the link for the survey is on the chat box. So if you can be able to copy that link, then you can answer it on the later time if you're too busy right now and you have, you're have you on a hurry um, going into another subject or if you have any appointments. So you can copy that link so you can answer that. Again, uh, we'll be um, generating your certificates once you answer this survey, okay? so. Answering this um, link or the survey form is really important for us to send you your certificates, okay? All right. Uh, okay. Um, as per Sir Kel, we can do the raffles. So, um, Irene, are you still there? Yes. Uh, okay, you can uh, share the screen for a quick raffle. So again, uh, we do have a couple of minutes actually till 11. So we can go ahead and do the raffle right now. Um, go ahead, Irene, you can um, share your screen. Okay, wait. Okay, so again, um, we'll be uh, having five winners. Uh, each winner will be receiving 200. It's up to you if you'd like to be uh, like an e-load or 
to your Gcash. We'll be the one to directly uh, contact you, okay? And hopefully guys are able to enjoy our webinar for today. We... And don't forget the survey link guys, okay? Okay na ba? Nakikita ba? Ano, Janelle? Yep. It's visible. So, you can now spin the wheel. Wheel to win. <laughs> okay. Sige. Game na? Oh. Game na, Janelle? Okay. Our first winner is... Our... I will count this so completed for we have or we already copied the the updated registration. Uh, yes, sir. It is the updated one. Edmark Paul Lustero. Lustero. Congratulations, Edmark Paul Lustero. You'll be getting a two hundred worth of G G cash or E load. It's up to you. So can we take note of that, Irene? Okay. Yes. Go ahead, next one. We like the music, guys. <laughs> Maria Rachel Lusterio. Congratulations, Maria Rachel Lusterio. All right, let's go ahead and do the third one. Ay, dapat nire-remove muna yung mga na, ano, nakuha ng winner. Sige, sige. Jomer Kaburian. All right. Congrats, uh, Jomer Kaburian. All right. Next one. That will be our fourth one, right? Eman John Garcia. Eman John Garcia, congratulations. Last one above. Yep, and our last one will be. Go ahead, spin that. Kindly click the remove so that it will not be included in the list. Or... Vincent Manlesis. All right, congratulations, uh, Vincent uh, Manlesis. Okay, again, those are five winners will be contacted by our team and we'll be um, uh, informing you guys on how you can be able to claim your prices. Again, in behalf of Trimex College's engineering department through our faculties, our head, our uh, engineering council and our committee, we would like to extend our um, thankful, uh, thank you to all of you for attending our today's webinar with the uh, topic introduction to fancy logic and its application and watch out for more series of webinars from the following uh, weekends so you can check out our uh, Tramix colleges page or by contacting or uh, doing pm to any of our engineering officers again thank you so much uh, to all of you for attending our today's webinar and you keep safe guys God thank you Again, guys, yung, uh, yung link ng survey, ah, wag nyo kalimutan. Thank you, guys. 
Okay, bye everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Guys, happy birthday, Monique and Brian. Thank you. Thank you. Have a blessed day. Thank you, Junelentine. Salamat. Bye po. Thank you. Thank you.